welcome. This is going to be just a short little practice, really to just teach how to get into crow pose, bakasana. I know a lot of people find this pose kind of a mystery, and um, I find it to be actually a very challenging arm balance as well. But once you figure it out, you start to realize it's more about balance, arm balance, than it is about strength. So I hope that I can shed some light on this really fun to do pose for you all today. You may need to have a couple blocks. They might be very helpful. Um, before getting right into the pose, I thought we'd warm up our core and our hips a little bit. So let's go ahead and begin just on our back and we'll hug our knees into our chest and just begin to massage into your lower back and into your hips a little bit. Taking in some nice full deep breaths, sighing out your exhale. We're going to further just warm up our hips. We're going to come into a Baddha Konasana Supta. So you can bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees fall to the earth. You could actually use your blocks here underneath your knees if this is a little much in the groins. Otherwise, just let your legs fall into gravity and bring your arms over your head. We'll stretch out our fingers, our side body, and then exhale, grab opposite elbows. Let's take a few moments just to drop into your hips, really exhale and relax into your hips. And then drinking in the breath as slowly as you can. Fill all the way up into your rib cage, your lungs, to the collarbones. And then again, sighing your exhale or just letting the exhale go as slowly as you can. Let the breath move into your hips and be here another full cycle of breath. there we're going to extend both legs up to the ceiling and flex the feet. Already here begin to ignite your core by just flexing your feet and grounding through your lower back and your tailbone and feel as you exhale that your lower belly is releasing to your back body. And then let's extend our arms up towards the toes and again drink in a big inhale. In your exhale, lift your head and your shoulders and also just raise your tailbone a little bit from the floor and reach higher towards your toes, igniting your core muscles. And we'll exhale, bend the knees, hug them into the body and lower your head. And from here, we're further gonna go into a little core work. Re-extend your legs. And take your hands behind your head and lower your head, but feel that your head is being supported by your feet. Take in a big breath, inhale. Exhale, lift your head and shoulders and begin to lower your right leg halfway down and just cross your right elbow to the left knee. Come back to center, inhale. And then exhale, scissor across, bringing your left elbow to the right knee. Come back to center, inhale. Exhale again, scissor across. Inhale, center. Exhale, cross. You're going to really lift your shoulder blades. Inhale, center. Exhale, over and across. Again, back to center. And exhale, across. We're going to come back to the center. And then again, just lift your sit bones and extend your arms. Gaze up. Ignite those core muscles. And then exhale, release back down, lowering your head and relaxing your jaw. From there, we'll take a few moments just to twist and massage the spine. So lower both knees to the left of the side of your mat and unfold to your right. You can gaze on the length of your right arm. Coming back to center, we'll simply switch sides, gazing down your left arm. Let's come back to center again, hugging the knees in. 
And then we're gonna rock forwards and we're gonna come into a child's pose for several breaths. So warming up the hips a little bit more with a child's position. Big toes touch, knees are wide. Crawl your arms forward and rest your brain to the earth. Take a few deep breaths into your back body. And then we're gonna make our way up to all fours and transition to cat-cow, which will also really prepare us for crow, bakasana. And inhale and sway your back to begin. This is cow pose. But then it's the cat pose that really prepares us for crow. So as you curl in and pull your belly muscles in, this is also what you will feel in your core and in your back when you go into crow. Then we continue to move here. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cat, rounding your back. And really push down through all 10 knuckles. Hug your lower arm bones in towards each other and broaden your upper arm bones and upper back. And then inhale again, gaze up, look up. And exhale again, coil into center line. From there we'll inhale, gaze up, and let's come into a down dog to further warm up the body and the legs. So lift your knees and just pedal out your legs a few times. Might kind of dance out this down dog, shake out your head, deep breath. Eventually come into a place of stillness. And then we'll continue to hold our down dog, walk your feet together, and let's just lift our right leg and open up to your right. And again, moving into some core work, let's bring our right knee to the outside of our right elbow. Look forward so you're in plank. And then kick back into your three-legged dog. And let's cross the knee over to our left elbow in plank and just pause here. Kick back into dog, open your palms wide, and then hug down center. Extend your leg back for a plank position with both feet grounded. Exhale, bend your elbows and slowly lower down, belly, chest, and chest. We'll roll the shoulders back and make our way into cobra. Exhale, return to earth, tuck under toes, strike your thigh bones up and inhale, plank. Exhale, return to down dog and walk your feet together. We'll lift our left leg, let's open up to the left. And then bring your left knee to the outside of your left elbow and plank, pause here. Kick up and back and dog. Scissor the leg under and across to the right elbow and pause. Kick back into dog. And this time return to coming down the center. Look forward. Extend your leg and find your way into plank. Exhale, bend your elbows. Then we're all the way down. We're gonna come into Salambasana. So interlace your fingers at your lower back. Lift your head, your heart as you pull your fist back, gazing off the tip of the nose. Exhale, surrender down. Plant your hands, tuck under your toes. Strike your thigh bones up and inhale to plank. And exhale to downward facing dog. From there, we're gonna walk our hands a little closer together and then bring your feet around the outsides of your hands to come into a squatting position of garland. And in the squat position, bring your hands to Anjali Mudra and press evenly your arms against your legs and then feel that your legs are resisting that. So you're really giving this kind of give and take, pushing and releasing evenly, arms into legs and legs into arms. Send your sternum forward and look forward and just breathe into the hips. And this again is something that you will also mimic when you're in your crow pose, Vakasana. And then from here, just release your hands. Lift your hips and walk your feet in, hip distance apart in parallel. Bend the knees slightly and come into an Uttanasana with again, hands interlaced at the lower back. Might feel nice to shake out the head and just release your shoulders. We'll take another full cycle of breath. And then hands on our lower back. 
We'll come all the way up to stand, lifting your arms up over your ears. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment to be in your mountain pose. And we'll inhale the arms again up over the ears. And exhale, dive right back into yourself. From there, looking forward, we'll step back again into our downward facing dog for a breath. And then just exhale, release to your knees. And you could take a moment just to watch me for a little bit, moving into crow, unless you just want to go right into this practice with me. Um, I'll do a little bit of demonstration. So um, first I'll just show you the pose without any props and just go right into it. So to come into crow, it's an arm balance. You're gonna need to bring your knees up high into your triceps, almost into your armpits, but not quite, because that's a different pose. That would be crane. So in crow, you squat down and you bring your knees up high into the triceps. And then you're gonna look way out in front of you. So actually since it is nice to have like a marker, like a block in front of you to be staring at. And to come into it, your toes actually are better off being a little bit further back behind you under your sit bones and close together. So it feels like they're barely on the floor even at the very start. So instead of being really heavy on your feet and in your hips, you wanna rock forward. So you're just barely on your tippy toes. And then to come off the toes, you have to push down into your fingertips, like they're little kitty cat claws gripping the floor. And you're squeezing your elbows in, like you did when you're in your squat position, your legs and arms are hugging in towards each other. Look up the whole time, open your throat, pull in through your core like you did in cow and just start to tilt your weight forward. And eventually your feet really have nowhere else to go but off the floor. They come up off the floor and you're floating there, gazing out in front of you. So squeeze into the mid line of your body. You could come down and when you would like to rest, squat is always nice and turning your fingers down and stretching your wrists could be nice. Now getting in there to that position, might be better with the help of some supports. So you could have two blocks. You could create like a little perch, like you're a little bird perched up on a limb, coming onto a block. And then this other block can be for your forehead to land. So it needs to be far enough in front of you that your brain will rest there. Now again, snuggle in, bring your knees high into your armpits. You can gaze at your block, shift forward, and bring your forehead on the block so you have a place to rest. But look at the block. Your body will follow your eyes. So do look up the whole time. And then squeeze again, your elbows in and your knees and around your elbows, rock forwards until again, your feet really have nowhere else to go but up. Keep looking at the block and eventually you could lift your head off the block and come back down. You may want to practice it that way several times using the support of the blocks. Again, in between, it's always a good idea to stretch your wrists, circle them out, coming into a squat position. And perhaps you don't want to use the block under your feet, just the block for your head. That also is a good idea. You could practice this way. Bring your feet together, hands forward, slender shoulders. You could raise up onto the balls of your feet, squat down, bring your knees high into your triceps, squeeze your legs into your body so there's even less daylight between your thighs and your side ribs. You're kind of closing off that space. Look forward, rock forward until your tippy toes come off the floor. Squeeze into midline, and again, you might look up so high that eventually you don't even need the block anymore. And you're just balanced. Feel balanced here. Perched. And then you could exhale, come back down, release your wrist and stretch it out. So I hope 
that that helped you find flight, catch flight. Just remembering again that it's more about balance than anything else. You have to evenly and equally hug into midline by pulling your core up, gaze up. So you kind of tuck into a little ball and from that core strength, that inner strength that gives you the power to rock up and just float and you'll feel light, you'll feel effortless. It's really nice. And eventually, once you've created that, you might be all able to also float back as you see so often in class. I mean, into your crow, really hug everything into midline. Looking forwards, rocking your toes off the floor. Now keep really, really looking up in front of you and don't look anywhere but up. And then using your breath, you can exhale in shoot back into your chaturanga coming through then into upward facing dog stretching out your hip flexors and moving back again into your downward facing dog to stretch your wrist out you may also want to just come to your knees and bring your wrists to the floor in front of you and just give them a little stretch here that can feel good also on your forearm we'll bring our hands into Anjali Mudra and bow to the inner strength within us that place within us that desires to take flight to be free thank you for sharing this time with me namaste